I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Alexandra Fragudaki. She's a good friend. She's the head of the ACSD unit in the Atifon Hospital and consultant cardiologist. And uh, uh, she will uh, present us the, the changes, I think, that were uh, uh, that we have in the recent uh, ESC guidelines on the ACSD. So, Alexandra, please. Thank you, George. It is my great, great pleasure and honor to present in this uh, excellent course and uh, to see you all. Um, I'm going to present now uh, the guidelines, the new guidelines uh, that is not very new anymore, uh, published in 2018 for the management of cardiovascular diseases during pregnancy. Um, they are based in um, ROPAC registry uh, and the uh, European Surveillance uh, on Congenital Anomalies Network. Uh, ROPAC registry uh, is an international registry um, who ended uh, uh, after 10 years of, uh, of uh, registering patients with uh, structural heart disease uh, who have been pregnant. Almost 6,000 uh, pregnancies have, have been registered. registered. Uh, as shown previously, uh, all um, congenital st structural uh, heart disease have been included, namely congenital heart disease, valvular heart disease, cardiomyopathies, ischemic heart disease, orthopathies, and pulmonary arterial hypertension. The prevalence of maternal, maternal mortality was 0.6% uh, in the overall cohort, while heart failure uh, prevalence was almost 11%. Uh, from 2007 uh, up to 2017, uh, the severity of the disease were increased, while the heart failure and or mortality decreased. decreased. Uh, that means that uh, 2011 pregnancy guideline may, may have contributed in this uh, better um, treatment of pregnant patients with structural heart disease. So what is new? We have new concepts and we have new recommendations. I'm going briefly uh, uh, analyze new concepts as uh, excellent previous speakers analyzed uh, new recommendations uh, in uh, several topics in uh, structural heart disease. So we have um, classified uh, the maternal risk in five categories. And um, this classification is now widely used for the better uh, management of patients with uh, heart disease during pregnancy. Uh, what I want to show is that, as uh, Dr. Head uh, said before, uh, severe symptomatic aortic stenosis in, is M who for now, uh, which was um, not the case in guidelines 2011. Uh, aortic stenosis, um, if it is asymptomatic, can be classified in category M who three, and a new. Um, Addition is that Fontan with any complication is now uh, MHU4. Uh, so patients with Fontan and any complication are not advised to undergo a pregnancy. Uh, in these guidelines, the level of surveillance is also defined. Uh, so uh, all patients in uh, uh, MHU3 and MHU4 should be uh, closed, monitor, monitored, and follow up. Um, in uh, specialized centers uh, and deliver in expert centers for pregnancy and cardiac disease. A new concept is the heart team. Um, it is introduced in uh, 2018 guidelines and repeated in uh, a recent um, AHA statement uh, in circulation 2020. Uh, the heart team is consisted of an obstetrician, cardiologist, maternal fetal medicine, geneticist, anesthesiologist, pharmacist, and nurse. And they follow up and they throughout the pregnancy, before pregnancy, they are um, 
in charge of the pre-pregnancy counseling. And of course, we should never forget uh, postpartum uh, follow-up and management of uh, ladies with um, structural heart disease. Um, a new concept is um, uh, assisted reproductive therapy, and we now have it as uh, more often, of course. Uh, it has uh, added risk above those of pregnancy alone. Uh, Superovulation is a prophorbotic uh, state and can be complicated uh, by this OHSS, uh, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. And this can be very, very uh, dangerous and can be managed uh, by careful cycle monitoring and uh, using low dose follicle stimulating hormone and, of course, only transferring a single embryo. Another point of focus in these guidelines is the uh, contraception and the termination of pregnancy. There are several, as you know, methods of contraception like pharmacological barrier methods, intrauterine devices, and they can all be used according to physiological stage and the risk of thromboembolic event. Sterilization is always an option, uh, while pregnancy termination in high-risk patients should be managed in an experienced center. What about bromocryptin? Uh, bromocryptin uh, is now used uh, after this uh, paper published in 2017 in patients with peripartum cardiomyopathy. Uh, it seems to have a very, very good results in terms of uh, left ventricular ejection fraction recovery. It should be used always with anticoagulation. In this specific paper, two regimens were used, low dose and high dose. Um, high dose uh, have, has been used in pregnancies with very, very low um, in ejection fraction and very, very high risk, maybe shock. So heart failure is a problem during pregnancy um, and this paper, position paper, has, have, has been published recently uh, from uh, the peri peripartum um, um, study group, cardiomyopathy study group, and the Heart Failure Association of the European Society of Cardiology. And this paper is focused in counseling before pregnancy according to the, uh, uh, to the uh, problem that uh, patients, uh, pregnant patients have. Uh, it's focused is focusing in prevent heart failure with hemodynamic optimization before pregnancy, uh, maybe a surgery needed or uh, something else. And of course, the level of surve surveillance of pregnancy and time and mode of delivery. Uh, there are some um, new recommendations made on systemic ventricular function and subpulmonary ventricular function for the first time. Um, in this paper, and uh, focus is given in postpartum care uh, with specific issues. So, in this guideline, perimortem cesarean section should be considered in the case of an acute life threatening maternal event. And the aim of delivery in this case is to improve the chance of suc successfully resuscitating the mother and only secondarily of improving the fetal survival. It can be consider, considered from uh, 24 weeks of gestation and should be performed within four minutes of the cardiac arrest. Uh, I, I won't say much, Marithmia, since uh, uh, Dr. Rosenthal previously uh, addressed this issue very extensively. Uh, I only uh, stress the fact that this is from ROPAC registry that uh, you can have ventricular tachyarrhythmia and atrial fibrillation of father during pregnancy, and the percentage the per percentage is almost one point five percent. So there are level um, uh, there are low risk, medium risk, and high risk arrhythmias, and high risk arrhythmias are are considered and stable ventricular tachycardia in structural heart disease, unstable uh, ventricular tachycardia in long QT syndrome and short QT syndrome, as uh, well as high-risk 
polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. Uh, in high-risk tachycardia, uh, delivery should uh, uh, take place in a, a high experience center uh, with, uh, of course, a defibrillator inside and maybe um, delivery at thoracic operating theater. So another different uh, issue in these guidelines is uh, the drugs during pregnancy. So uh, everyone should now um, uh, evaluate pregnancy lactation labeling rule before uh, giving or administer any drugs, any medical treatment in patients, in pregnant patients. And this is different uh, since uh, these are more extensive and uh, we're not uh, allowed to use as of uh, summer 2022, 20, uh, the classification of uh, drugs from A to X. So uh, decision making based on former FDA categories alone is no longer recommended, is class three. And we should always go to table four, a special table in guidelines uh, that uh, uh, has details on any drug that can be given in pregnancy. So I'm going to um, not, it's, I, I, it's very busy table. So I'm just going to point out some, um, some uh, points. Intervention is recommended before pregnancy, patients with mitral stenosis and valvaria less than one um, centimeter, uh, square centimeter. Uh, Flecainid or propafenone are recommended for prevention of supraventricular tachycardia in patients with Wolf Parkinson syndrome, while SOTAL is deleted. In pregnant women with low molecular weight or unfractioned heparin, is recommended to perform weekly anti 10 a level monitoring or APDT monitoring, while uh, catheter ablation, as uh, Dr. Rosenthal said, uh, with um, uh, mapping should be considered an experience center in case of track refractory and poorly tolerated supraventricular tachycardia. And uh, it is very important to uh, underline that uh, we should not use any more the former FDA categories in order to um, classify. Uh, drugs in pregnancy. So, select new recommendations. Uh, right ca uh, heart cath can be performed in patients with pulmonary arterial hypertension under strict indications. Uh, women considering pregnancy and requiring heart pulp surgery, it is recommended to choose the prosthesis in consultation with a pregnancy heart team. And it is very important that we should underline this, that it is recommended to manage pregnancy in women, in women with mechanical heart pulse in a, centers, in a center with pregnancy heart. So, finishing this uh, talk, I would like to uh, underline that pre-pregnancy risk, risk assessment counseling is indicated and it's crucial in all women with known or suspected congenital or acquired cardiovascular and orthopedic diseases. It is recommend, recommended to treat high-risk patients in specialized centers by an entity team, and uh, this is called now the pregnancy heart team. Vaginal de delivery is recommended as first choice uh, in most patients for most important exceptions uh, we have tables saying that patients with heart failure, aortic uh, dilation and um, anticoagulation use um, or Marfan, severe uh, Marfan, can be uh, delivered by cesarean section. And in terms of congenital heart disease and pulmonary arterial hypertension, Pregnancy is contraindicated in patients with pulmonary arterial hypertension and in patients with fontan after any associated com complication. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Alexandra.
great talk indeed. And uh, you pointed out the main uh, uh, changes compared to the, to the previous era, maybe.